All right, welcome back to SciTech Intermountain, setting up total stations. So I've got an SPS 930 here. Um, I'm going to show you how to set the backsided in and resection this total station using the actual pole itself with what I've got as an AT360 on here. Um, if you don't have an AT360, a lot of what people have used been using is a multi-track here, the multi-track passive or active. Um, but I've got the AT360 that does require the battery in the top right here and you just turn it on to what channel you need. Um, I in other videos have used the back sights such as this one. Uh, it's seven foot to actually shoot it by standing by the total station. But if you're on a small job site and you don't have time to set the back sight out or don't need to have it set out, because a lot of times you just set up real quick and uh, need to go to work and you're only out there for a little bit. So it does kind of suck to take the back sights with you. So what we'll do is go ahead and hook up to our total station here. We'll hit our menu. Go ahead and hit our menu and connect to the total station. Go project setup, connect device, and we're going to hook total station. On the faceplate, remember if you don't know what it is, all you do is go and look at and see what the number is in the bottom right. That number can be changed right here by going in, by tapping this button, going to setup and level. If you needed to change those numbers for any reason, let's say someone else is on the same channel and in the area, you can go into the main menu here where the setup is and go down to radio settings. And you can change the radio channel and the network ID. So if we didn't want it 1010, I could go here and change that to a different number. So, but we'll go ahead and just back out. We'll hit the back button until we hit exit. And we'll hit exit and position. So it's on 1010. We can change it from the data clicker also once we connect to it. But right here, I've got SPS series radio 1010. That's three. So as it's connecting, it doesn't matter if you're right by the total station or not. You can be six, seven hundred feet away from that, and it's still going to work. It's a radio connection. If you are by it, you'll notice that you'll get the little trimble symbol that'll come in there, and you'll actually hear it making noises. And if you have the lights set to flashing, that'll be on also. So we can go here and check it and see that it's off a little bit. The trunnion is off a little bit. Trunnion is side to side. So what I'm going to do is just turn that a little bit until I get that down closer to zero. And then the siding is front and back with the total station. So you know if the siding's off, you can hit one of the screws right in front or behind to get that number as close as you want there and make sure to enable the uh, compensator. Let's go ahead and hit OK. Set the active temperature for outside. We're up to about 83 now, generally. And we're going to go ahead and leave this set to what it is. And then we are going to set up arbitrary again. So we're gonna go arbitrary. This is still set to the uh, 360 back sight that I used for the back sights that are currently out there. So what I can do is without having to back out and go and set it somewhere else, I can just hit add point here. And knowing which one I'm gonna to go to first, I've got the three out here, the North Complex one, two, and then this first one, North Complex C. I know that's the one I'm gonna start on. So I'm gonna hit select. What this is going to do is allow me right here to check my height. Now, with my two meter pole, I know some of you that do a lot of this are going to recognize that I'm just using my GPS pole. There's the other one, I don't remember the name of it, that actually has the ability to pin it right here instead of different heights. I personally just like using one pole because then I don't have to carry two and I can just switch back and forth between GPS and not have to worry about it. Plus, with a total station, it's all line of sight. So if I slide this pole down to where I've got it down right here, but then all of a sudden I'm standing in front of my shot of the total station, it's in my way. At least with this one at seven foot, it's always above my head, but you can use a different pole. So two meters clicked in, AT360. I gotta change that right here to an AT360 on this. It's the bottom of the list. It will not let you do it passive. You have to have it turned on so the lights are on and pick the channel. So I'm on number one, go ahead and hit okay or accept. 
Once I'm good there, I'm going to slide my legs up. There's a couple different ways. Usually if I'm close enough to the total station, I'm going to go ahead and just set this out in front of it like this. I'm going to just get kind of where my light is, and I'm going to go ahead and grab it. You can see that light starts flashing fast. Walk over to our control point. So I'm going to set on my control point. It doesn't matter if you're facing the total station or not. But what I do want to show you is if none of you actually have turned the lights on on it or understand how that works, or it's new to you, there's a button in the top right here of your site work screen that kind of shows a lock in a total station. If you click that, that's going to take you into a menu where you can change a couple things. For the EDM, you can put that on tracking, which will make it take the shot a little faster. And to the right right here where it shows the light, you can see that it has a triangle right there that almost shows kind of a split looking light right there. So you can turn that off. So if you look back here at my total station in the distance, there's no flashing light. It's still tracking me though, because it's telling me that I'm about 102 feet away from the total station. But if I turn that on, the reason why I like that is because it's one, gonna flash fast when it's actually got hooked me. So if I cover up my target, you can see that I get a warning lost, but it's also flashing slow. As soon as I let off and open it up, it flashes fast. The other thing is you can use that light. So if I stand on this side and look back at it, it's flashing green. It's a split lens for that light. As soon as I get here, it goes red. So if you stand right in between the two, it's green and it's red. That comes in really handy when you're trying to manually turn to find yourself. When you're really, really far away from the total station, it does have a search option, yes. But if you want to manually find it, it's a lot easier to do it this way. And a quick button, just so any of you know, instead of going into this menu and hitting joystick, you can hit F3 on the keypad here. And that's a short key to the keypad. So if I'm manually turning it with my keypad here, you can see that as I get closer, I can try to find it. Like, oh, there's the green and there's the red. Just turn until it basically goes red or starts flashing green. So, let's go ahead and come back out. I'm set up on my control point. I'm going to level up. Spend a little extra time on it. 7 foot AT360 hip measure. So I've got a control point shot just like that. So let's walk over here and hit one other one. Okay, I'm going to come over here, set up on this point, but I'm going to also face my pull the same direction that I was facing the other way just to take out any error in my bubble. Go ahead and level up here. And then I'm gonna hit add point. My next point on my list here is this other one right here. Now, we can verify if you need to by looking down there and you can see the total station in the distance. It's flashing on me, it's followed me the whole way. We'll go ahead and hit select. Verify that I'm on my right height and AT360 and I'm level. We're gonna go hit measure. And since I'm on tracking, it just instantly takes that shot. So yes, I'm out on my horizontal there. Um, the, vert, the HA is at 10 and the HD is at 6. That's because, like I said in the last video, if you hit settings here, you've got an angle tolerance of 0 0.05. So those are off just a hair, but the elevation in between those two, that delta Z, is 0. Like it, There's no elevation change in between them. But to average out, let's go hit one more real quick. Okay, I'm at my last point. I'm going to set up, face the same direction that I was facing with all the other ones. Let's level up. I always look back at my total station to see if it's flashing. That's what I personally like, is to see it. Once again, it'll give me a warning if it's not, but I like that for the visual. So I'm going to come in here and add another point, and I'm going to go to my last one over here. Complex, hit select. And I'm going to take the shot. So, error is still out a little bit there. I haven't culminated this gun recently, and that might be why we've got a little horizontal out. The Delta Z is the one that I'm most concerned about because I'm on a flat plane right here. So, I'm not as worried about a little bit of a shift. Um, basically, two hundredths a shift. It's that elevation, that Delta Z that I'm most concerned about. 
Because if you watched any of my other videos, um, a total station is being set up. It's not using a calibration where a calibration already pinned the job site down on all the corners. There's no issue walking across the job site with a GPS rover for any change in that because of the actual calibration pinning it. Well, a total station gets set up and still tells you where you're at on the job site based on the target and relativity to where the total station is. But in your setup, if you have one control point that's heaved over the winner or, or sank or been ran over and you accept it and one's higher or lower, you're still going to have a good horizontal of where you're at on the job site. But your gun will be, or your total station, sorry, I refer to it as a gun every once in a while, it is going to set itself up on a plane that over distance you're going to rise or fall. So even if it was a hundredth or two hundredths, if you travel six or seven hundred feet away from that total station, which is about your limit that you'd want to go anyways, you might start climbing. You, you might be checking grade or check into a control point on the other side of the job site that's going to tell you you're off a little bit. That's because the plane of the total station, either this way or this way up or down, is going to rise or fall based on that. Um, so it's really important to just pay attention to your numbers. Even though it says it's out of tolerance, you can go ahead and hit accept. It'll warn you. You can say yes. And you, can not, you don't have to save that position where the total station is. So you can go ahead and hit that. It'll write it. We're good to go. Now what you can do is walk back into the project. I don't have a surface until I get inside this line right here. So you can see as soon as I get in here, we have all the same functionality as if it was running a GPS. Um, you can go ahead and shoot points. Here's an interesting thing to think of, though, is if we recorded a point right here, let's go ahead and just do a topo one as a feature. Turn this to no and take a shot real quick. I got a shot right there, topo one. If I were to stake that point, it's not like GPS where you, if you get that within six feet, you've got your uh, info bar that comes up, your uh, bullseye, I call it. See where if I'm f out here, I'm actually facing north right now. But if it says back a, a tenth, if I go back a tenth, that number actually does not do exactly what I want. If I face away from the total station, you can see that right there it's saying go back a tenth. But as I back up, that number is actually climbing. It's interesting. It's something to get used to because I'm facing 100% or 180 degrees away from the total station. So if I set up on that point and it says go back a tenth, if I back up a tenth like you would think with GPS, that nine, not number climbs. It's all relative to the total station. So if I face the total station, you can see it in the distance there. Now as I set up on that point and level my bubble, it says go back towards me two tenths, then it's relative. If I back up, that number comes down. So a couple things to be aware of and to get used to when you're running a total station versus GPS. But it's still the same thing on the job site here once we're actually set up. Uh, the other thing is, is my numbers are much more um, tolerant. Uh, you can see that elevation is not bouncing like GPS normally does. It's basically holding even at the thousands. So anyways, thank you for watching this video from Site Tech Inner Mountain on setting up your total station using a target on your pole and not using back sights.